We believe, because the Bible says it, that homosexual conduct is a result of God giving sinners over to walk after the lust of their flesh. But we also believe that the things found in verses 29, 30, and 31 are the result of God pe giving people over to walk after their own flesh. We would not be in error as are some and say that homosexuality is not a terrible sin in the eyes of God. But we would not make the seemingly opposite error of saying that it is one unique and special sin that is terrible in the eyes of God. When the Lord in Romans chapter 1 gives you quite a list of things that are the evidence that one is dwelling in a, in a, in a state of reprobation. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1 and verse 29, or 28, let's start 28 for the sentence. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Doesn't that sound nice? Not convenient. In other words, if you do these things, your life will not be better. It will be more difficult. If you do these things, you will not be walking in a path that is less restrictive and a path that is, you know, that's what I, I'm going to get free of all these rules and these regulations. And I, No, the Bible says you will find your life becoming, becoming. You are going to complicate your life. You are going to confound your life. You are going to burden yourself down and it's the devil's lie to tell people that, that Jesus' yoke is difficult and that Jesus' burden is heavy. And it's the devil's lie to tell people, as he did in Psalm number 1, if we can just burst these bands asunder, if we can just get free from God's rules and God's regulations, then we can really live it up. But the people that have gone that route are depressed and suicidal and drug addicted and drinking and they just falling from one broken, torn-up relationship to another and bringing children into the world that live in all sorts of abusive situations while people that live by the Bible are enjoying life more abundant with love and joy and peace and, and all the trimmings. The Bible says in this list, being filled with all unrighteousness. What do you mean, Lord? And the first thing on the list is not homosexuality. The first thing on the list is fornication. Then wickedness, then covetousness, then maliciousness, then full of envy, then murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, Quite a list. I'm going to say tonight, without, without even hesitating to make sure that I'm right, I'm going to say this. Probably almost all of you have never been engaged in any homosexual sin. And probably almost all of you have never even been tempted along those lines, but there is not a person here tonight who has not done something in the list we just read. Which means that every one of us, if we do not like to retain God in our knowledge for a day or a week or a month or a year, is capable of doing something that is hated by God, something that is completely void of fruit, reprobate, something that makes us worthy of death in the eyes of a holy God. So we are not by any means going to put the homosexual on this mountaintop of sin and the rest of us are living in the nice pleasant valley where sin's not so bad. 
God says, if I abandon you, if I, if I just let you have your way and you don't let me have my way, here is the list of things that will result. And somewhere in that list, you found something you've done. So not me, I, I, I'm better than all those other people. Proud was in that list. <laughs> I mean, the, the minute you, you think in your heart, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, you add yourself to the list. So let's just agree with the Bible. There is none righteous, no, not one. Let's just agree with the Bible. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let's just agree with the Bible. There is, there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. That's a fact. Now, having said that, isn't it odd that the number one sin in the list, which is the number one sin of this or any nation, which is in the long run the most destructive sin to a nation, is the one that hardly any minister will mention. Don't you find it an odd thing that that which destroys more lives and families and homes and children and societies than any other sin is the one that ministers are silent about? And the reason is they've been silent about it for so long that their churches are filled with practitioners of fornication. And were they to start now to preach against it, their income would suffer so greatly that they might not recover. And so they say, stay silent about the killer of homes and families and cultures. And that's fornication. Fornication is, according to the Bible... Sexual relations between unmarried persons. Sexual relations between an unmarried person and a married person. And it includes adultery. That's Matthew 5. And it includes incest. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Now, simple question for you. Does your nation approve of premarital sex? then you live in a nation that collectively has a reprobate mind. Does your nation approve of extramarital sex? The answer is yes. And that's evidence that you live in a land that is collectively given over to a reprobate mind. Does your church, that wouldn't fit you, or denomination or minister stand against fornication? If not, you are in a church that is being led by someone who is evidencing a reprobate mind. The fact that people are compelled to leave this congregation because they are sexually immoral and are welcomed without question into membership of a Baptist church right down the road, not one, not two, not three, but all but one or two, shows that the churches are in no position to turn the nation back to God because they too are suffering from a reprobate mind. Now, I thank the Lord to my, to my knowledge. Uh, Brother Hershen Roeder down in Deltona and Brother Rickles right up the road here, they hold the same line we do on these things. And I, I thank God for them. I, would, I, would, uh, I don't know other men personally, but I, can, I could give you a a lengthy list of pastors who don't care and churches who don't care. We just believe in love. Well, tell the man whose wife is messing around with another man. Tell the woman whose husband's messing around with another man to define love for them. Tell, tell the children affected by these broken homes and broken marriages how you define love. What you mean is you love a larger congregation and you love an offering. Because if you love people, you preach against the thing that hurts more people every day than anything else. It's not love, it's the love of money. 
Do you consider persons living as a married couple outside the bonds of marriage, do you consider that acceptable behavior? Your nation does, and most churches do. But God says it's not convenient. We're not going to do statistics on, on this. We did enough statistics on the other stuff. But the divorce rate for people who live together before they get married is way higher than for people who don't. So when it's just, we're just, you know, just, you know, just a trial run and a, and a test run and see if we like each other. And well, what's, what does what you're doing have to do with seeing if you like each other? <laughs> anyway, how about some Bible verses? There's plenty of them. Second Corinthians, or Chronicles, Second Chronicles 21. Second Corinthians 21 would be hard to find. Uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 21 and Matthew chapter 5. 2 Chronicles 21 and Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to address the children, or I'm not going to address the children, I'm going to address the young people. The children can just zone out this evening. Be a good night to draw pictures and things. The adults probably know where I'm headed. But the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 21, now please, please listen carefully. 2 Chronicles 21, verse number 10. So the Edomites revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day. The same time also did Libna revolt from under his hand, because he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers. Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication and compelled Judah thereto. Isn't that interesting? immoral. In Matthew chapter 5, interesting words here, Matthew chapter 5, and verse number 31, it has been said, whosoever put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her is divorced to commit adultery. So, here in the New Testament, Jesus said, you got a wife, and you get rid of your wife, and now you got a woman out there trying to survive in the world, and you got a woman out there with children trying to survive in the world, and at some point, she's going to make some decisions or do some things that, that she never would have done had you not pushed her out there into that situation. What she's doing may be wrong. The Lord says, you're the cause of it. So here's what I want to ask you, uh, teenagers, young people, just in all honesty, here's what I want to ask you. Are the songs you're listening to, if, if, you, if you obey the lyrics of those songs, would they cause the Lord to reveal this, or would they be a cause for you to be immoral? Now you can say it doesn't matter, but it obviously does. Because the young people growing up in the world who listen to the music of the world see nothing wrong with fornication. Right, right. Amen. And the young people who grow up listening to the type of music that you get in a Bible-believing church think it's wrong and are embarrassed to even talk about it. I would ask you if the, what you call entertainment, if the shows you watch and the movies you watch and the websites you visit, if you did what you're looking at, would you be fornicating? Would you be committing adultery? Would you be lip-locking with someone you're not married to? You say, well, I don't, I don't think there's any cause and effect there, but you're wrong. 
Because people who read and study the Bible and pray and fellowship with other Christians and go out witnessing for Jesus, they don't spend hours a night gawking at actors pretending to be in love, and one of them's a prostitute, and one of them's a married man, but it's a love story. Somebody's causing you to think differently than the Bible would have you think. If you meet a boy at church and that boy says, well, I don't see anything wrong with me putting my hands on you, why would you stay with someone who will be a cause of your downfall? I was thinking this afternoon, and I try to think a little bit every day, I was thinking this afternoon about our society, about Romans 1, and just, just honestly, just, I'm old, I'm old so I can say this. If you could go back to when I was a boy, and you did not watch television, and you did not go to a public school, and you did not have the internet, <laughs> what would any of you know about homosexuals? Nothing. So don't tell me those aren't the source materials for the problem. What would you know about all this adultery and fornication and wife swap and everything else? Now, some of you came pretty rough home, pretty rough background, but I'm talking about as a, as a whole, as a congregation. If you grew up without a public school and without a television and without every night sticking your face on websites on the internet, you wouldn't, it would never enter your mind that it is normal for women to go from man to man to man and from woman to woman to woman. Somebody compelled you to think that way, which resulted in you acting that way. So I'm saying, parents, you do not need to go soft on being in church and being in the Bible and on media influences just because your kids have reached a certain age and they're wanting to break, break the yoke and run out and be free. You need these kind of people influencing you, and this kind of preaching influencing you, and this kind of music influencing you. You don't need anything that's going to cause you to go where your flesh already wants to go. Bow an arrow to their head or a spear to their head and say, you will commit fornication. No, he glorified it, he promoted it, he, he said there's nothing wrong with it. He lifted up and exalted the people who practiced it until a whole generation of young people thought it was the normal thing to do and the fun thing to do and, and there's nothing wrong with it and nothing bad's going to happen. Somebody taught you that. And shame on these preachers who aren't fighting back against it. Shame on these preachers who won't take God's side and tell the truth about it. That's a fact. All right. Girls, let me educate you, please. I want to help you out. I love you. I'm your friend. I love you. Really and truly, I, I, I know this is a fact. Six girls could go together to a school dance and dance together because they enjoy dancing and it's fun. The only, the only reason a boy goes to a dance is so he can watch your hips sway back and forth in front of his face. Otherwise, he would never get on that dance floor for a hundred bucks. And he is hoping and hoping and hoping that the two of you are not outside getting a drink when the slow song comes on because he wants your bosom on his chest. And you think he just wants to have a nice time and buy you a flower and see you in a pretty dress. Let me help you. 
He wants you to arouse him sensually. And once you light that fire, uh, you're taking a chance. You've got enough water in your bucket to put it out. That's just, that's just a fact. That's just a fact. If you're not going to do anything you shouldn't do in front of mom and dad, why do you need to be off where mom and dad can't see you? Well, you know, I just feel so restricted. Yeah. You feel a lot more restricted. You got a baby to raise and no husband. You feel a lot more restricted. You get married to somebody you didn't want to get married to just because you felt like, well, now it's the right thing to do. We got to do this thing. There's a lot more restrictions than you know about at 17 or 19. Trust me. Trust me. Young man, you think it's tough to get by on, what, on the money you're making? Try paying for your house and her house after you split up. Because she finds out she really hated your guts for what, what you did to her. Just trying to help you. You want to keep listening to that, that music telling you to fornicate? You want to keep watching those movies tell you to fornicate? You want to keep going to that, that Facebook where all your, your lost friends and say they're saved but they're not friends brag about how much fun it was to fornicate and how it's okay and God's not against it, there's nothing wrong with it. All you're doing is putting shackles on your hands and feet. If the Bible's true, if the Bible's true, that's all you're doing. You're, you're, you're being encouraged to do that which is not convenient. Well, he said if I didn't make out with him that I didn't really love him. Then you don't. That's right. That's right. That's right. Then you don't. Just say, I don't love you. Right. If that's what I got to do, prove I love you, what am I going to have to do next week to prove I love you? Yeah. And you'll want more proof next week. Yeah. Just trying to help you. Amen. Just trying to help you. Yeah. Acts 15. Acts 15. So, they have this big council at Jerusalem. And they, they, when they get together, here's what they talk about. Are saved people under the law or not? Are all those sacrifices God ordained still binding? Is the blood of Jesus Christ sufficient to cleanse us from all sin? I mean, they, they have a knockdown, drag out discussion of the most weighty and important matters of New Testament doctrine that have ever been discussed. And here's the outcome of the meeting. Verse number 19, Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication. You say, well, you know what came out of that meeting, Acts 15, was that salvation by grace through faith without the works of the law. That's not what they said in the letter. What came out of that meeting in the letter is, okay, you Gentiles, I know you never heard this before because you didn't have a God that ever talked to you. But now you've got a holy God, and here's what he said. Get rid of your idols and keep your clothes on. Don't you think that's interesting? They're going to write a letter to all the churches made up of newly saved Gentiles. And they're going to tell them no idols and no sexual relations outside of marriage. Now... How is it that people have been going to church for 30, 40, 50 years in a society like ours and they haven't heard that once? I don't mean a sermon about it. I mean not a mention of it in passing. When God said, you better tell those Gentiles, I don't approve of that because every one of their cultures and societies is telling them to do it. And the God of the Bible says, make sure they know not to do that anymore. Amen. How about that? Amen. First Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians 6. First Corinthians 6. Now here's how sick our, our country's become. It's, it's sick enough that you have people who go on a TV show to talk about their sexual preferences and practices. But it's even sicker that you can make money doing that because people want to sit and watch somebody else talk about that. 
What a bunch of sickos, man. You talk about reprobates drowning in reprobation. But they'll come on there and here's some, here's some fruitcake, you know, talk, talking to the fruitcake host. And, and, and the fruitcake host will say to the fruitcake, well, let's talk about your sex life. Life? How about work? How about cooking? How about cleaning? How about laundry? How about the lawn? How about God? How about church? How about children? How about... If, if in your brain life equals sex and sex equals life, you're dangerous. You are so out of balance you are so far into the realm of, of satisfying the lust of your flesh that normal people should stay away from you, but they don't. They sit eating the chips they bought with their welfare check, watching you talk about it. This country's messed up, man. Next on Ellen the first transgender divorcee. <laughs> How about all of you just drop dead? Bunch of sick perverts, man. That goes to the people watching it. Oh, I can't wait to see this. Hey, come, come on over here, Agnes. Come over, bring, yeah, bring that pie. Ellen's got the first transgender divorcee. Every one of you needs to be on a chain gang. You need to get out in the sun and dig a ditch with a sheriff watching you, man. You're sick. Sick, man. They're sick. If you sit around watching that stuff all your life with your mom and your stepmom and their living girlfriend, and you're going to think, I'm the weirdo. Somebody's caused you to commit fornication. All right, 1 Corinthians 6. Everybody happy tonight? I'm, I'm, I'm happy, yeah, happy, happy in Jesus, yeah. 1 Corinthians 6, verse number 9. Know ye not, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. God's, God's righteous. Be not deceived, neither fornicators. It's the first thing in the list. Nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers themselves of mankind. Brother Andy, uh, this, Andy, I know he'll remember this. This 20 some years ago. He came in one, one night, I think we were still at the women's club, and he said, Man, I got an open door. We can go into the Tomoka prison out here and we go out there and, and uh, tell those people about Jesus. So we, we went out, out there and went through all the clear and everything else and went out in the yard to start witnessing people. And the first fellow walked up, he had on these little, little teeny tiny gym shorts and a pair of tennis shoes. Remember they met with a little puff ball on the back of the sock. The little <laughs> footy sock with a puff ball on the back. And he came walking up and he said something like, hey big fella and thank God I knew that wasn't me. Because I was with Andy. <laughs> you, remember, you remember, I know you remember that. <laughs> and Andy... <laughs> And he just started preaching, preaching the gospel to him <laughs> fervently. <laughs> anyway, effeminate, abusers of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortionists shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you're washed, but you're sanctified, but you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. So they used to do those things. Now they're saved, and they don't do those things anymore. Nobody's talking about, nobody's, nobody's condemning you for what you did before you got saved. But if you're saved, it's time to stop. All things are lawful unto me. Well, I'm not under the law. Neither is Paul. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful unto me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So here's what, here's what the sinner says who wants to keep sinning. Well, I, I'm not under the law. Stop trying to put me under the law. Why do you want to be put under a fornicator? Why do you want to be put under an adulterer? Why do you want to be put under an effeminate or somebody who abuses mankind? 
People say, well, I don't want to be under the law. You want to be under something. If God's commandments don't govern your life, then the world's decrees and, and, and way of doing things are going to, somebody's going to run your life. When you say we're not under the law, what you mean is God's not going to tell me what to do. Country music's going to tell me what to do. That's, that's what they mean. He just said right there, he said, I'm not under the law. Everything's lawful for me. But I'm not going to do what's wrong. I don't need a law. <laughs> 13, meats for the belly, hallelujah. Amen. And the belly for meats, that's convenient. <laughs> but God shall destroy both it and them. So you better be concerned about more than your fitness. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Got that? All right, now, with it, with it, just deep breath. Everybody relax. Verse 14. And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of an harlot? God forbid. See that? I'm not under the law. I'm free to do whatever I, whatever I want to do. And since this body now belongs to Jesus Christ, I don't want to use it to sin. I want to use it to honor the Lord. It's not a matter of law. It's a matter of love. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two saith he should be one flesh, but he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Who do you want to be joined to? Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Now, you want to talk about homosexuality? That, that's what, well, you know, it's homosexuality. That's, that's sin right there. I'll tell you that. Ain't no, no other sin like that. Well, that's true, but here's what God said. The reason I put sexual sins at the top of the list is there is, and God does not explain it. He just tells you. He doesn't explain how he created the heavens and the earth. He just said he did it. God said, there is some lingering, lasting harm that you do to your body when you use it for fornication rather than obeying God. That's what he said. I don't know if it's emotional. I don't know if it's psychological. I don't know if it's physical. I don't know. I don't know if it, he doesn't say. He just said, there's not a verse that says, flee covetousness. Flee, whispering, flee, backbiting. But God says when fornication presents itself, you need to turn and run. Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay with you. You want more than that? I got no more than that. But that's what he said. 19. What? Know ye not your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and you're not your own, for you're bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body, in your body, and in your spirit, which are God's. Well, I just think what matters is, is the inside. That's what you think, but it's not what the Bible says. God said, I'm concerned about your body and what you do with your body. I know what you use your body for me from here on out. Go ahead. All together, just some, you're stressed. I can, I can tell. The tension's building up. Now, concerning things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Amen. And what do you think he means by that? You're not stupid. <laughs> it is good for a man not to touch a downed live power line. Well, I mean, how, how, how much touching? I mean, how much? I mean, does it mean one finger or two fingers or grab it with your hand or how much? <laughs> if it was anything else, you would know what don't touch means. Put a sign on a bench, wet paint. Half the people walk by, got a, just got to risk a pinky on it. Just, why? What do you care? 
All right, so does everybody know what a woman is? Everybody, everybody here know what a woman is? All right. All right. Don't touch them. You're not married to her? Don't touch her. Pretty easy. Look, you don't have to worry about who, too, how far down the road is too far if you stay off the road. See, just, just don't get on the road. You know, I think we're going too far. No, no, not yet. We, we can go a little farther. But once you start having that debate, And girls, listen girls, um, I don't care if you're married or not married, we, we all know this, so I'm just, I'm, we're okay. Well, Amen. Females have brakes. Males do not seem to come equipped with brakes. <laughs> the fact that you, whenever you're, whenever you're getting nervous, you say to your boyfriend, stop, I'm done, you assume that He's going to say, okay, I'll stop. No, he's going to keep hitting the floorboard with his foot where a brake pedal is supposed to be, and there ain't no brake pedal. So don't get on the road. I got all this from Mr. watching Mr. Rogers. <laughs> I never watched that guy. Gave me the creeps. <laughs> Verse 2, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. Okay, so, well, you know, what am I supposed to do? I'm have a wife, your wife. Well, what are the, my other options? That's your options. And let every woman have her own husband. Her own husband. Not somebody else's husband. Not somebody who's not her husband. Pretty, pretty easy, isn't it? Let the husband render the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power of her own body but the husband, and likewise the husband hath not power of his own body but the wife. So biblically, if she says, come on, man. You're dirty. You're smelly. Clean up. Oh, yeah, you tell me what to do. God told her she can tell you what to do with your body. Right. <laughs> you know, you know, dear, that that uh, that shirt just looks awful on you. I mean, it was okay as long as it covered all your stomach, but now that it just comes halfway down, it's just not working anymore. And you, but it's but honey, it's so comfortable. Change your shirt. Anyway, we, we, we don't want to linger long there. So what are you talking about? You hadn't been to Walmart lately, have you? <laughs> I just want bananas. I didn't want to see half a guy's belly and half of his rear end. If you weigh 270, get something besides sweatpants, please. <laughs> of course, that's a racial thing, because <laughs> did he say racial? Now I'm listening. <laughs> Which is worse, the black man showing you all of his underwear or the white man showing you half of where his underwear should be? <laughs> um, l let me get back to my notes. <laughs> I'm old, my mind wanders. <laughs> Verse 5, defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. All right, you're going to hear it here first, then you're going to hear it here last, because nobody else is going to say this. Sister, God told him the only way he could do that was to marry you. You said you knew that when you agreed to marry him. He expects you to remember that after you're married. Amen. 
Come on, don't trick it out on me now, guys. <laughs> You're not going to get this chance again. <laughs> Try, trying to help you here. <laughs> Pastor, I think he just married me for you know what. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but he can go out to eat with anybody. <laughs> he can hire somebody to clean the house. There's one thing he can't do without you. I'm just going to have a drink while you compose yourself. <laughs> Say, wouldn't you and me saying this stuff your mom was here tonight? You're right. <laughs> you are absolutely right. <laughs> All right, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Everybody happy? Amen. Hope I didn't lose any of the ladies on that one. Gal Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5. Now here we go again. Watch this. Verse 16. This I say, then walk in the flesh, you should not, uh, walk in the spirit, you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the flesh is still the flesh, still has the same lust it always has. Now that you're saved, you've got to choose to walk in the spirit. Your choice, your call. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. So here it is again. Well, I'm not under the law. No, you're not, but you're supposed to be under the Spirit. Amen. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Look at this. Hear it? Top of, every time, top of the list. Adultery, fornication. Uncleanness, lasciviousness. Okay? So, adultery, that's married people. Fornication, unmarried people. Uncleanness, homosexual acts. Lasciviousness, that's all of the above on steroids. Then, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, reveling, such like. Now, the whole list is bad. But you know what's at the top of the list? The sin that comes naturally. See, here's why this is tough. God did not make a man to get drunk. God did not make a man to make an idol. God did not make a man to, to raise a sedition and take over a nation or a church. God made a man and told him, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. So, you are being asked by God to let the Holy Spirit control your most basic, natural impulse given you by your Creator. That's why it's at the top of the list. And the Lord said, I want you to yield your body to the control of the Holy Spirit so you don't do what I made you to do except within the guidelines I established for that purpose. That's what he said. Now, we're doing, we're, we're okay, we're doing okay tonight. Yeah. When, I, when I preach something like this, the single people come and say, well, preacher, what about me? And what they don't realize is they're standing in line behind the married people who are saying, well, I thought this was going to fix everything. God didn't say, if you're single, you got to walk in the Spirit so you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. He said, if you're married, or if you're single. He didn't say, flee fornication until you have a wife. Or, Look, all of these are true of everybody. Being single doesn't mean you can't be victorious in this area, and being married doesn't guarantee that you will be. Why would there be anything in there about adultery if marriage solved the problem? The problem is not being married or not being married. The problem is your thoughts and your heart. And you don't let the Holy Spirit control that. You're going to make a mess whether you're married or not married. 
That, that's just, that's the truth of the matter. All right, Ephesians chapter 5. Here we go. Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 1. Be therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given him, well, I just want somebody to love me. You have somebody who loves you. Amen. Pure and perfect love to the end. I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee, Lord, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the earth. Walk in love as Christ also loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, now look at verse 4, filthiness, foolish talking, jesting, Verse 5, whoremonger, unclean person, idolater. So there's another list, but what's at the top of the list? Fornication every time. Then why is nobody preaching against it? If it's public enemy number one, why is nobody preaching against it? Verse 3, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Is it part of the movie? Then that movie is not fit for a Christian. Is it part of the novel? Then that novel is not fit for a Christian. Is it part of what the group talks about when they're, when, when they're you know, out doing what they do? Then that's not the group you want to be in. We should never have to deal with this as a church. It shouldn't ever come up we have to address the issue of so-and-so committing fornication. It should, never be, it should never be named having been done. But it should never be named at all. When you've got 40 million things to talk about, why would you talk about this? Why would you read somebody's social media postings about this? Why would you adore a singer and, and purchase the music of a singer who sings about this? It's not supposed to be named among you. Young lady got up to sing tonight and suppose she just said, well, you know, I, I've got a lot of gospel songs, but I heard this great song on the radio the other day about a girl who met a guy at a bus stop and they went home and spent the night together and it really spoke to my heart about love and I just want to sing that tonight. No, you're not singing that tonight. Well, if you're not singing that tonight in here, why would you sing it on the way home in the car? Let it not be once. Why would you be talking about things in a positive way that you should never be doing? Let me say something else, guys. Help you out here. If you come to me and, and you're on crutches, I say, what happened? You say, well, I slipped and broke my ankle. Okay, I'm buying it. But if you come and say, I slipped up and cheated on my wife. That's not a slip. <laughs> That's a long walk in a wrong direction. Nobody slips up and commits adultery. Well, I, preacher, I slipped. No, you idiot. You walked over the Holy Spirit and over your conscience and over what you knew to be right and over the vows you made to your wife and over... You climbed over every bit of that to end up where you are. So come back. You want to talk? We'll talk, but come back when you're done lying. You're not here to repent if you're lying. A preacher, I just I didn't want to get right with God. I slipped up a little bit. You don't want to get right with God. You're lying. Amen. Yeah. You didn't slip. You've been planning this thing for half a year. That's right. That's right. Premeditated, Holy Spirit quenching, conscience silencing act of your will. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen. You want to come back and talk about it properly? We'll talk about it. Till then, get out of here. Amen. 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 All right. Colossians chapter 3.
Colossians chapter 3. You know these preachers, they don't want to put adulterers out of the church because three, three related families and two friend families will leave with them because the pastor was mean. Listen, dummies. A man who commits fornication or adultery in a church found someone with whom to commit adultery or fornication in the church. You want me to let him stay here so your wife or daughter can be the next one? People are so weird, man. Why would you kick him out of church? You know, he just they were in love and they slipped up and they fell and you want you want him to stay and so your family can be the next one he tears up? You take that same position about molesters? Take that same position about murderers? Well, he only killed two people. I, mean, I think we should give him a chance. Let him live with you. You give him a chance at your house. He don't get another chance at God's house. Well, where's the love? I guess we don't have any right now. Here's what I don't get. How come God's not entitled to any love? How is it? Well, where's the love? How about love for God? How about love for Jesus Christ? How come all the love has to be for the people who are sinning against God? I got two more verses here and got to hurry. All right, Colossians 3, verse 1. If you then be risen with Christ, I am, are you? Seek those things that are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. That's up to you to do that. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Praise God. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. God said, I want you to put to death things in your life that aren't right. Kill them. Kill them. Kill them. Don't, don't let them hang around. Kill them. Fornication. It's first every time God gives you a list of sins. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which idolatry, which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. How about that? You guys got complete, total, absolute, 100% blocking filters on your computers? Why not? Your wife have access to all your passwords and all your passcodes and all your computer history? Why not? What are you trying to keep alive that's supposed to be dead? Sister, he got full access to your phone. He got full access to your, your little computer you got. Well, no, I got, I got some things that are just private, just me and why? Why? What are you keeping alive? Listen, there's men sitting right here tonight who were shocked when their wife walked out on them. You know why they were shocked? Because she had a secret life that he wasn't entitled to look into. Your husband got a secret life. Your wife's got a secret life. I'm concerned for you and you ought to be concerned for you. Kill it. You guys got some stuff in a closet somewhere, a storage shed somewhere that you know you shouldn't have and, and you're not messing with it now, but you know, one day, you, you're, what are you planning? Backslide one day and go back into sin? Kill it. Get rid of it. Well, you know, I just got to, I just think I'll go online tonight and look up and, and see where the, where the old boyfriend is. Why? You don't have a husband? Well, he's getting kind of old. The guy you went to high school with is as old as you are. What do you think, he just stopped back there with Peter Pan? If he didn't age, you think he's waiting to hear from you? People are nuts, man. This fellow one time, this is when this whole internet thing first got going. And uh, 
he just kind of dropped out of church and backslid and messed up his marriage and lost his wife and kids and everything else. And I ran into him one day and, and went, well, I went to see him actually. It's been a while, I went to see him. He said, I'm getting married. I met this woman on the internet. No kidding. He told me where she was from and she was pretty and all that. And I said, okay, well, we'll see how that goes. I mean, this is a new thing. I mean, I'd never heard anybody doing that before. And so she showed up to marry him. Her and the other person she'd eaten since she sent the picture. <laughs> and she just, for some reason, she had forgot to mention her four kids. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Who are you? I'm chat room number 4327. You don't look the same. <laughs> well, I stopped Nate on the way down. <laughs> and who's the four little welfare recipients you got with you? <laughs> oh, those are checks number one through four. <laughs> this is my firstborn EBT card, and this is my... This is my <laughs> Happy birthday to me. <laughs> All right, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. This world is so messed up, and if I'm appointed to be the last one saying anything about it, so be it. No malice in my heart, no hatred for anybody, but the devil has deceived you into messing up your lives. God's word will work. God's word is best. Amen. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 1, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. I'm not under the law. Are you under the Lord Jesus? Yeah. Amen. For this is, a, by the way, that's Paul telling you to obey Jesus. Well, I just go by Paul and Paul. If I find Paul, I don't find Jesus. Well, then you're not following Paul. Right. Paul told you to follow Jesus. Amen. For this is the will of God. Pastor, I just don't know what God's will is for my life. It's easy. Even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. There it is. God's will for your life is not Zambia. It's not the pastorate. Amen. God's will for your life is not to double your tithe or your, or your pledge to missions. God's will for your life is that you keep your clothes on till you get married. Amen. And that once you're married, you stay true to the person you married. Amen. That's God's will for your life. In plain English, in 1 Thessalonians 4, in a Pauline epistle that he got from Jesus. that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. So what do they do at the Christian college? They have the kiddies dress up, and the boys and the girls dress up, and they go to a Cupid banquet. Why would you do that? Because you've been influenced by the Gentiles. What do you mean? Uh, bow, arrow, little guy in a diaper, <laughs> flying around shooting people. I'm in love. No, you're not in love. You're 20, you're away from home. It's your senior year, you hadn't found anybody yet. You're desperate. <laughs> Let's see, what do we miss tonight? Uh, <laughs> you know what the Lord said? Here's what he said. He didn't give you a manual. He didn't give you a list of 20 do's and don'ts. Here's what he said. I expect you to know how to control your body yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
so that you don't commit acts of immorality. That, that's what he said. He said the Gentiles, the Gentiles, that's unsaved, non-Jews, no Bible, no scripture. That's Hollywood, that's the news media, that's the public school. Will constantly tell you, just do it. See, that's, that's the Gentiles. So if you want to live pure and live right and live holy, you need to have a Bible pastor and Bible church leaders, and you need to encourage your parents to stay with the Bible, not whine and complain and try and get them to leave and go to a liberal church where you don't have to hear preaching against sin. And you need to make friends with people who intend to stay pure and stay clean until they get married and after they get married. There you go. Now, there's, there's nothing we read tonight is complicated. Yes, nothing we read tonight is hard to understand. But if that's the top of God's list, every time he gives a list, you cannot walk out of here tonight and say, I don't need that. Right. Because everything we read was written to save people. Amen. wasn't written to lost people. written to save people. So he's talking about you and you and you and you. He's talking about the, the, the best singles in our congregation and the best married people in our congregation. He's talking to every one of us. He said what he said. All right. Father bless.